on my 10th birthday on April 10, 1964, I was circumcised. And many people will be wondering why would you wait till 10 before you were circumcised. Many Muslims believe that Ishmael was not circumcised on the eighth day and they delayed the circumcision of it. It's not a widespread practice anymore. But it was April 10, 1964 that I was circumcised. And on the night of that circumcision, I encountered the Lord in a, an unusual way, but I didn't know it was the Lord I saw. I saw a pillar of light that rose through the earth into the skies and went down into the ground. You could follow it and see many things under the earth. And a desire rose up in me to embrace that light. As I began the journey towards the light, suddenly I met four elements on the way. It was bush, real thick bush on the right and left. I saw a well. I maneuvered the well by stretching one leg after the other over the well, jumped to the other side. And then a python came from the left. I gave the python my left leg, he swallowed it. We began to struggle until he died. And I pulled my left leg out of the belly of the python. And as I was pursuing, running towards the light, there was an outbreak of a river in the natural. I didn't know how to swim in 1964. I learned how to swim in 67 in Ogun River. So, but I waded through the waters and about 10 or 15 meters to the, to the pole of light, uh, there was an outbreak of fire. Many years later, when I read Isaiah 43, when you pass through the waters and through the rivers and through the fire. And when I read in Isaiah, the well of salvation was when those things made sense to me. They didn't make sense April 10, 1964. I went out through the fire and embraced the light. I woke up from that dream. Don't forget I was circumcised in the morning. I was in a pool of blood because as I was struggling with the python, the part that was circumcised also was being bruised. And I was almost fainting when they called people to help. And I told them I saw a great vision. I narrated it. Nobody understood what it was. And uh, an elderly man, Baba Lodo, we call him, he's gone to glory now, he's passed on. He said, you'll be a great man. That was the interpretation. Mm. And I left the dream. I forgot everything about it. Until September 24, a Muslim friend of mine became a Christian. And because I was a freelance photographer, he invited me to come and cover the baptismal service at Yaba Baptist Church. I went in there to cover. I just finished my Muslim prayer. I wore tajir, the caps that uh, bishops like to wear at the back of their heads now. Uh, I wore my tajir and I got into the church and they asked me to remove my cap. And I said, look, I'm not a Christian, I'm a Muslim. I just finished prayer. An elderly man said, in Rome, do what the Romans do. So I removed it and sat down. And then they started this, what I consider a mess. Both men and women were being dipped inside the water. In, in the church, and I said, if these people would like to take a bath, why don't they do it? We Muslims would do our ablution, clean our hands outside. Why are they doing it inside the church? It was very irritating to me. It was my first time of seeing a baptistry and a baptismal service. And when I'd taken the photographs, I wanted to go. But my friend said someone to me that I could not go. They were about to have the Holy Communion. Now, back in my own days in Abelkuta, Holy Communion is given to those who are about to die. We had Christians around us. And when Baba Nikwa was about to die, the bishop came and quickly gave him Onjale Ulua. We thought it's something you eat before <laughs> you die. So he said they will have Holy Communion. So I waited behind. The gentleman who preached that day, September 24, 1974, was Reverend, Reverend Emmanuel Alabi. His first daughter, is the MD CEO of Unity Bank today. We all grew together in the Baptist Church. Uh, Mrs. Shumefo, that's the first daughter of Reverend Emmanuel Alabi. So I waited, they went to change, and Reverend Alabi came in a flowing white agbada, and he said, before communion tonight, I'll give a short exhortation, titled, Jesus, the light of the world. As soon as he mentioned Jesus, the light of the world, the pillar of light I saw in 1964 stood behind him. Mm. I mean, I thought everybody in the church was seeing it. Then I saw myself maneuvering the well, struggling with a python, running through the river, running through the fire. In split seconds, my camera was in my hand shaking. I've seen him before. I know him before. They thought I was hysterical until I told this story. That was how Jesus arrested me on September 24, 1974. 
And I'm so grateful to God that he revealed himself to me in a unique way because before becoming a Christian, there was you couldn't persuade me to be a Christian. I'd already mastered the rudiments of Islamic religion. I graduated from Quranic school April 16, 1967. My, as my grandfather was the first chief imam of Ipuro Shadakai Mosque. My mother was an Alaja. My father was a chieftain in Islamic religion. It was impossible, but he sovereignly arrested me and I'm eternally grateful for the salvation of my soul. So that's how I became part of Yaba Baptist Church. And I grew through uh, uh, all the different kinds of training, Baptist Training Union on Fridays. And I'll never forget the story. After my first Sunday there, on Monday, I went back to church and they have locked all the doors. <laughs> I look at the church and I said, there's nothing going on here. He said, no, not until Friday again. I said, well, what am I supposed to be doing from now to? He said, go and read your Bible. It was strange to me because I was praying five times daily. And now they said, it's Sunday, Friday, then next Sunday. Whoa. So I began to read my Bible like I would read the Quran from cover to cover. And Matthew, wow. uh, who was my contemporary, uh, we became so hungry that within the first four years of salvation, I'd read the Bible from cover to cover 16 times, and I'm still doing today.